call it a rental car reversal. Hertz is going back to gas. The company is selling off about 20,000 of its electric vehicles to buy gas-powered cars instead. Why? The cost of repairs from collisions and damages is hurting the company's bottom line. They say depreciation, also a problem. Hertz says price cuts in the new car market, driven primarily by Tesla, are pushing down the resale value of the EVs. But while Hertz is cutting back, the White House is speeding right ahead, doubling down. Yesterday, they announced more than $600 million in funding for new EV charging stations across the country. So the question now is, are Americans all in or kind of worn out? on electric vehicles. Joining us now to break through, let's see, Lauren Fix is with us, automotive expert and founder of The Car Coach. Lauren, another reason, by the way, that Hertz mentioned is there's just a lack of demand when people are sitting on there clicking. And I just booked in New Hampshire and Iowa. I did not even think to book an EV. I mean, have they plateaued in a way? Well, for rental cars, for sure. Uh, you know, Chance, I was just recently in Jacksonville, and I went to get my regular rental car like you. I just booked a midsize SUV. And, the, of course, they're like, oh, do you want to swap over to an electric vehicle? And I'm thinking, no, because I have to bring it back with a full charge like you would have to bring it back with a full tank of gas. And I don't plan on spending my vacation sitting at a charging station for an hour or hoping there's a charging station that functions. And that's part of the problems consumers are finding with these electric cars. It's not the vehicles they're producing because they are producing some pretty impressive vehicles like we saw at the Consumer Electronics Show. What we're seeing is consumers frustrated with the charging infrastructure and then, of course, the cost of increased on insurance and then maintenance. And that's one of the things that Hertz found. Boy, these tires are wearing out a lot quicker than they planned. Really? Okay. I hadn't seen that. I'm so glad you're here. You know, and that reminds me of that report that one of the cabinet secretaries for President Biden, she planned this, you know, cross-country venture in an EV, and it turned out like they would show up somewhere, there weren't stations, you know, some of them took forever, you don't have the, the account that you needed. It was a whole big giant mess. But then I wonder about familiarity, because in a car, you kind of, you want to have a general idea of how it works. And then there's the range anxiety. Will it get me to where I need to go? A lot of us still don't trust that the juice is really going to be there and that we'll understand the charging system. How do they overcome that? Well, I, I think people have gone beyond the range anxiety because there's cars like the Lucid Air, which will go 500 miles on a charge. It's charging anxiety. And I went through the same thing in L.A. I, I picked up an SUV that was an electric vehicle, and I got to the charging station that said, hey, you just go to one of these charging stations. I got there. There were three stations. One wasn't working. Two were filled. Someone had parked their car and took off. So whether they went home, they went to the mall, whatever it was, they weren't there. So their cars were fully charged but I can't plug in, and this is the frustration. It would be like someone leaving their gas pump in the in the car and then taking off, mm -hmm. and you would never do that because you can fill up a gas tank in seven minutes. Now, there are some upcoming solutions such as hydrogen, BMW's working that, Hyundai's working on it, and a couple other brands, and then that's great. Those are potential solutions that will fill up a charging in four minutes. However, that's going to require not just infrastructure, which we don't have, but it's also going to require adaptation to the existing cars, which may not be available. So mm -hmm. I think that consumers are waking up to some of the issues that are out there as far as the technology of these vehicles and how they, they many of them work very similar to what you're used to. If you're driving an F-150 and you look at a lightning truck, you'll get in and go, wow, that works just like my regular truck, except instead of adding fuel, whether it be diesel or gas, you're plugging it in. So some people are charging at home. Again, if you've got an older home, which a lot of people do, something that's, you know, 50s or older or even into the 70s, you have to update your electrical equipment. And that includes the box mm -hmm. because otherwise you could potentially cause a fire and a certified electrician has to put it in. And those costs are on you. Well, that doesn't sound overwhelming at all, Lauren Fix. <laughs> so, I mean, given everything you just told sure. me, have they oversold us a bit on how quick and easy all this is going to be? I think the overselling is the government mandates. I think consumers want to have a choice. If you live in the city and you drive only, you know, back and forth to work and it's five miles each way, an electric car is perfect, perfect for running around town, taking your kids to school, whatever that might be. But if, where I live in Buffalo, New York, we have a blizzard coming. The last thing you want to be is an electric car in a blizzard because the resistance of the snow, using the heater, using the defroster, using your charger for your phone, all these things draw down on the battery, different than that of gasoline. So people are considering, you know, maybe this 
doesn't work. And in this area, electric vehicles are just not selling people that have them. It's their second or third car. Now, if you want to do that, that's also an option, but not everybody can afford two and three vehicles. So I, I think that they're starting to realize that they're kind of saturated already with those early adapters, those people that love the tech. And for the average person, maybe it's not a good fit. And again, also, the average cost of an electric vehicle is $66,000, where the average cost of a gasoline-powered vehicle is under $50,000. So you start looking at those differences, and you go, you know, maybe not this time. So people are looking at mm. hybrids, which gives you the best of both worlds. Plug it in, electric when you need it, gasoline when you're on the road, maybe a long trip where you're going a lot of places, or the weather's terrible. So I, I think you're going to start seeing a larger push toward that, although the federal government doesn't want that. They want everybody on electric, and the grid can absolutely not support everyone being on the grid. Wow. And I looked it up. By 2035, nine states have already said you cannot buy a gas-powered car in that state or district by 2035 after that. So, I, I mean, that's, that's according to CNN Money. Okay. Yeah. Lauren Fix, yeah. I want to talk to you again. No, you I don't see, think it's going to happen. I'm not I think... a car person, but I want to talk to you again in the future. Thank you. Good luck with the blizzard. Thank you.